writing feels vulnerable, and English is this wonderful mixed up and constantly changing collection of dialects, pronunciation, and spelling, and that doesn't make it any easier. At the same time, writing is an inescapable part of our day to day, whether it's texting a friend, writing an email to a coworker, or just browsing online. <laughs> With writers, I hear this a lot. They say the spelling doesn't make sense. Why is the grammar like this? This doesn't sound like how I talk. Two things changed how I understood English and writing. Learning the history of the English language and also working with multilingual writers. There's a joke that English isn't a language, it's three languages stacked on top of each other hiding in a trench coat. And that joke isn't entirely wrong. English is a part of the Germanic language family, specifically the West Germanic branch. Its closest relatives are Dutch, Frisian, and German, with more distant relatives in the Northern Germanic Scandinavian languages. The earliest records of English are from the seventh century in England. It sounded very different at this time. Ready? Ready? New Shulan Herian Hef on Rich's Word, Meatodas Miechta, and his Mojathonk. This is from the oldest English poem called Cadman's Hymn and translates to Now We Will Worship the Warden of Heaven, the Maker's Might and His Mind. If you were lucky, you caught two words and his. If you were very lucky, you caught that new at the beginning sounds like now. We call this version of English Old English because it's the oldest. It's the oldest recorded ancestor of modern English. It was spoken in England for several hundred years, but even at this point in time, English was already starting to steal words like from Greek and Latin, like bishop from episcopus and candle from candela. We call these loan words, words that we've loaned from other languages, except I like to call it stealing. Between the 9th and 11th centuries, Northern Germanic came to England in the form of Old Norse. Old Norse and Old English were pretty mutually intelligible. You could understand what, what someone was speaking to you. So it didn't actually affect Old English very much, though we still stole some words like ugliger, ugly, and skirta, skirt. We also stole the word they, a pronoun, which is very unusual for a language to steal. However, in 1066, something big happened. The Norman invasion. William the Conqueror took the English throne and England was taken over by speakers of Norman French. Norman French is a Romance language, meaning it descends from Latin. And so while Romance languages and Germanic languages are actually distantly related, their many greats grandparent being Indo-European, they're part of the Indo-European language family, by this point in history, they were already super different entirely different languages, could not be mutually understood unlike Old English and Old Norse. So having the two languages together, they kind of butted up against each other with all the rulers speaking Norman French and everyone else speaking English. Because of this kind of conflict, English during this time started to turn into what we call Middle English. An example of this might sound a little bit more familiar. When that April with its Shara Sota the Dracht of March hath pierced to the Rota. This is the beginning to the Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer, written in a London Middle English dialect in the late 14th century. And it translates to, when April with its showers sweet has pierced the drought of March to the root. Not super different. We can tell how much English changed in the hundreds of years between Cadman's hymn and the Canterbury Tales. The French had a major influence on English. And in fact, to this day, in modern English, about a quarter to a half of our words are from French. Sometimes we stole the same word twice. So for example, in Old French, there was the word chef, which Middle English stole and turned into chief. And then we stole it again in modern English and that's where we get chef from. We also still have some of the class distinctions from this time. So the people speaking English we're raising the cows and the pigs, English words. But the people speaking Norman French were the ones eating them. So they had beef and pork. 
French words. But there's more reasons than that why English is weird. Starting in the 15th century, Middle English started to turn into early modern English. Greek and Latin were the languages of science at this time, so suddenly farms were practicing agriculture. And creatures that lived in trees were arboreal. And the study of those creatures, zoology. Zoom forward a little bit in time and we're going global. Colonization means that English is now stealing internationally. A good way to think about this is what did you have for dinner recently? Did you have burritos, Spanish, with a side of guacamole, no hop? Perhaps you had a curry, tell me up. What did you drink with it? Did you have tea, which is a Chinese word via Malay and Dutch? Or maybe you had chai, same Chinese word, but via Portuguese. Often as English stole these words, it only changed the spelling a little bit as well. And that's one of the many reasons English is weird. But there's one really big reason that spelling is difficult in English. Let's go back to the 15th century, just after Geoffrey Chaucer, as Middle English is turning into early modern English. There were many dialects of English at this time, but from 1400 to about 1700, all the dialects were going, undergoing what we call the Great Vowel Shift. It was a change of pronunciation of all the vowels in English. They changed where they were pronounced in the mouth. So example, the word boat became boat, boat became boot, and boot became bout. My favorite example of this is to look at the spellings of the words mouse and mice, which were originally mouse and mice. So why does this make English weird? Well, in 1476, the beginning of the Great Vowel Shift, the printing press came to London. And where printing presses go, standardized spelling follows but the standardized spelling was the London dialect and the great vowel shift was continuing until 1700. So our spelling started to be standardized while our pronunciation was changing. So spelling usually changes very slow, which is one reason that a lot of the spelling these days is really difficult, but it can change quickly, especially with the internet. A really good example of this is the word COVID. When we first started seeing that it was short for coronavirus disease, all capitals. Then I started to see it more with just a capital C, COVID, a proper name. Now, mostly when I see it written, it's all lowercase, COVID, like we would write the flu. It's a generic noun now. The internet is a really good example of how quickly that changed. We saw that happen online, but it happens with new words every day. And it's no wonder we can get stressed when we're writing. We want to sound smart, but writing feels vulnerable. And English is this wonderful mixed up and constantly changing collection of dialects, pronunciation, and spelling. And that doesn't make it any easier. At the same time, writing is an inescapable part of our day to day, whether it's texting a friend, writing an email to a coworker, or just browsing online. Working with multilingual writers helped me understand the complexity of English. I've tried to learn over a dozen languages, and I'm only fluent in English, but English steals vocabulary, so I saw a lot of similar things in those languages. Um, and as well, my dialects are from all over the place. They're from California, Hawaii, the South, Scotland, and in each of those places, the dialect of English that I have from it is deeply tied with the culture. I learned how much this mattered when I was working with speakers of other languages. As they were trying to make sense of English with me, we were trying to find parallels between their languages and English, maybe whether it was loan words from English into their language or their language into English, or sometimes false friends, words that we thought were the same but were not. And in this process, we really got to understand each other's culture and communication styles. We discovered there's no such thing as broken English. There's just proximity to standardized English, which is really the descendant of 15th century London dialect, which none of us grew up speaking. Using all our language skills together in speaking, writing, reading, and listening in all our languages and dialects, we strengthened our ability to communicate and our communication was richer 
and more vibrant for the complexity. So why does this matter? Hopefully it's comforting to know why English is so weird. If you struggle with English, well, take comfort in knowing no one's born knowing professional or academic English or English spelling. I like to say it's Englishes, and they're many and beautiful. And you don't need to know the history of Englishes to be good at using it. But the more varieties you engage with, the more you engage with your own, the better you're going to get. So read more, read broadly, read from different countries. Write more, write in your dialects, write in dialects of your friends and your family, of your profession, of your education. So knowing now what, why English is weird and complex and diverse, I want to leave you with this question. What Englishes do you speak? <laughs>